Can you hear the noise in our back, my background? No, ma'am. Here we okay. go. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us today, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than Sister Fatima Muhammad out of Detroit, uh, Michigan. First of all, assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Why alaikum salam, sir. Yes, ma'am. It is um, it, an extreme honor, and on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come have a conversation with us this afternoon. The first question that we want to know, ma'am, is when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Um, first of all, let me thank you, Brother Joshua. I am honored to be on the People's Podcast. Um, I've had the opportunity to work under your father out of, when I lived in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And as well as with your mother on many, many um, times the minister spoke. So it's indeed an honor to be mm -hmm. on here today. Um, I joined the nation in 1990. I was away at college at Tennessee State. And I was visiting Detroit one day uh, for Christmas. And my sister told me about, had you ever heard of the nation of Islam, they Muslims. And I'm like, never. And she was like, oh, we got to go. They're all young Black people and they love the Bible. They love the truth. You going to love me. So I couldn't do it that Christmas break. But when I came back Easter break of 1990, we went to the mosque on a Wednesday. And student minister Dawood, at that time, Brother David X was teaching. Brother, it was so hard. It was so truthful and resonated for everything I wanted. And, uh, and let me say this quick, quick uh, background to it. Before I left Tennessee State, I had got on my knees and prayed to the Lord that he come to me and show me he's real because I want to mm -hmm. know him. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't mean I wasn't doing my dirt. It just meant I would like to stop doing my dirt if I could find him. Mm -hmm. And when I got here and Brother Dawood was teaching, it was like he literally was talking only to me in the room. Um, I stood up and accepted. I went the next day to meet with Brother uh, David at the time because I had a book of questions. I had at least three pages I needed to ask him. He took the time, Brother, with every question. And I knew in that moment this was for me. I went to my first class that Saturday and haven't left. And that was 33 years ago. <laughs> oh, praise is due so to all praises due to a lot. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And my sister Miriam sends the greetings. And thank you, everyone who's watching I'm all across the country. Um, yes, ma'am. So my next question is, how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teaching? You know, my mother, her first statement was, um, you know, you got to give up pork. That's the first thing that came out of mouth. So that if that was all for what I was gaining, I could give up the ham and the bacon in a minute. That meant nothing. My dad thing was, I think you're going to be perfect in it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they supported me, my entire family. Now, initially, my family is kind of like, because they're very strong Christians. We have churches and pastors and deacons in our family. So the first thing is, why are you turning your back on Jesus? That's the first thought. But after a while, brother, it's our commitment. And after 33 years, and they've seen me stay the same course. Um, they've never seen me without my hair covered. One family event, we were at a family reunion, but my draped scarf was black. So as I'm walking, they thought it was my hair. So my cousins start running like, your hair not covered, your hair not covered. <laughs> but when they got close, they was like, oh, she okay, she okay. So over the years, after seeing me stick to this commitment and live in this life, they've accepted it 100%. So I've never had that, um, you got to leave the house or we won't accept you. There was that initial, okay, how are you and Jesus with this? Okay, tell me where Jesus fit in this picture. But after a while, everybody is... um very accepting very accepting beautiful yes ma'am excellent 
And uh, Brother Nelson Ramos from Massachusetts says, awesome making beautiful people. Well, like salam, wow. sir. Wow. And thank you, everyone who shows love on you to our YouTube family as well. Shout out to Brother uh, Kente and Brother Musa and all of the sisters and believers who are watching on yes. uh, YouTube as well. Yes. My next question is, you sent me a video. Yes. Uh, on Facebook, uh, where the Most Honorable Missiles Farrakhan was speaking. Could you let me know about how that video, the correlation yes. with you and let us know, put us on. Okay. Well, um, after joining the nation and soldiering and starting, I eventually moved to Chicago after being in the nation, maybe about a year, year and a half. And one particular day, I was at the bus stop, full uniform, full garment. And that evening, we were at the mosque. And I'm standing there, and the minister starts saying how earlier that day, he saw a sister in her full uniform at the bus stop. And I'm thinking, I was at the bus stop in my uniform. And then he said he was driving down, I think it was 55th Street. And I'm thinking, I was at the bus stop at 55th Street. And he then proceeded to say he wanted to pull over and say to the sister something about her being in the garment. He said, but he couldn't get over and how surprised she would have been. He said, so instead he said a prayer for that sister. And brother Joshua, I don't know what the prayer is, but to know he, we know he prayed for our nation. He prays for all of us. But to know he said a prayer for me, it's one of those things that sustain you and keep you going despite you never knowing all the words of the prayer, but knowing it was a prayer. So as I'm standing there on the inside, I'm just like elated. I could have passed out. And Sister Betsy Jean Fargon turned to me and said, that's you he talking about. And I was like, yes. yes so it's one of the greatest highlights of my life honestly knowing that the minister said that special prayer and i i pray i get the opportunity to just say thank you to him one day oh praise it's a lot beautiful excellent and my sister naima sends the greetings and like to my name and thank you everyone who's watching all across the country yes, yes ma'am my my question for you is when did you go from seeing the minister as someone who may be a political uh, a political figure or an activist to someone who is in fact divinely guided? You know, brother, I had the opportunity by Allah's permission to be in many circumstances where you've seen things take place where others may call them a miracle and they may be by definition a miracle. But I knew that Allah was with him in his mm. guidance. Mm. And those are the things I've seen privately. But the things that we all have had the opportunity to witness, a man don't call two million, a uh, one million, and two million show up on a happen chance. Because if they could, anybody could do it, they would. But when a lie is with you and a lie is guiding you, and you can stand up and say the things that Minister Farrakhan said. And the danger that comes to others don't come his way. That's not because of the fruit surrounding him. That's not because of how much we just pray for him. But there's a divine backing that every time I see him say something and it manifests, again, you could call it a coincidence, but at a certain point, too many of those, what you may call a coincidence, we got to start looking at this some way different. Um, I've had the opportunity to travel across the country and see the minister in different circumstances and the way the people respond, brother, it, it, it's, it's baffling. I can also say uh, one opportunity, we were in Chicago and the minister was trying to decide if he was gonna go speak at the church, a church, I think it was Johnny Coleman's church. So the minister decided he would come. So the security is in the parking lot as we're waiting for the minister to arrive. As you see him driving, you can see the baby planes following the path. Mm. So we could see where the minister was by watching in the sky. And as the minister pulled into the church, brother, it was so crystal clear that people who did not know this truth was looking in the sky going, what is this? And they were lighting up. And I mean, they, and as soon as the minister went inside the church, they all 
disappeared. When the minister came back out to get back in the car, they all reappeared and followed him back. Those kind of things you witness for yourself, that's not again an mm. accident. Allah is giving you the opportunity to bear witness to what you see in front of you. So, yes, sir. Beautiful. All praises due to Allah. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, ma'am. And people are clapping and applauding and showing love Praise all in the comments. Allah. Thank you all very much. All right. My next question for you, ma'am, is have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how have you overcome that fear? You know, I, I thank Allah that I've been given the opportunity to be tried. You know, it's a blessing when everything is going good. Brother, when you eating well, the bills are paid, the money in the bank, life is good. Oh, brother, life is good. <laughs> but when the trials come, it's really your opportunity to see what you made of. And I don't, as time go, the minister said to us most recently at his birthday, we have to get past just saying we believe but get to a stance of no. Early as I was striving in my Islam, there were many times challenges came up and I'm like, how am I gonna handle this, you know? But we've always been taught, we put our faith in Allah, calling on Master Farid Muhammad, but we stand up and go to work. And as a single mom, for many, many years, over 15 years, I was a single mom raising my four children. And there were times, brothers, I could tell you, honestly, I didn't know how we would eat. So it wasn't the fear of, I may lose my life, but the fear of, will I fail my children? Will I fail those who look at me and I keep striving and saying I'm this believer, but I'm going through hardships that's dropping me lower and lower. The fear of, can I still keep my head up despite all the trials around me that's testing me and pulling on me. And it's gotten low. I mean, brother, it's gotten real, real low. But one thing I've never done, stop saying there's no God but Allah in the person of Master Farid Muhammad. I've never stopped saying, I know the honorable Elijah Muhammad has been raised for us. I have never stopped saying that Minister Louis Farrakhan is there for us. I know that despite how low it gets, how fearful things may get, I never turn my back on holding on to the rope of Allah. Brother student minister, well, brother minister Rasul, that was one of the things he would drive in us in Detroit when he was our minister, was holding on to the rope of Allah, never turning back. So brother, I thank Allah I came in when I did because that's mm -hmm. something that stays as my foundation. So what, there are times it get very scary. There are times when I don't always know how this gonna go, but I know with a surety, I know, not I think, I don't believe, I don't hope. I know with a surety, Master Farah Muhammad, if it's his will, I'll get through that one too. And I'm okay with if it's his will. And if that ain't his will, I just ask that he allow me to accept whatever is his will to get through it. So my fears have become almost like it's a challenge I welcome because I know Allah will bring me through, however the way it may come through. Powerful. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. And people in the comments are bear witness as well. Yes, beloved. Speak on track. Allah praises you to Allah. The sisters saying they love you. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Alhamdulillah. Well, I, wanted, I wanted to speak on the trial. What has yes, been the greatest trial and how have you overcome that trial now? I think for me, one of my greatest trials, brother, was um, I moved to Florida and I took the children. And when we got there, I had been making arrangements with this lady to get the house, but everything was via email. Once I showed up a black Muslim with four children named Fatima Muhammad, she just changed her mind on the whole deal. She just mm. said, no. Oh. So now I find me and my four children in a motel um, 
at the time, Florida was going through this like construction time period. So it was like only a room that had one bed. And I'm trying to figure out how to care for me and my children. And it was scary because we're by ourselves in Florida. And it just so happened where I found a place to reside and work wasn't near the believers at all. Like we were totally a distance away. And the fear of how do we eat? How do I pay for this hotel? Can't find a house. How do I keep it going in a, in a if you will, a foreign city by myself and these children? And brother, my prayers became my, I, I don't know about five prayers a day. I can't even say seven, brother. I was at least 10, 12, 14. So <laughs> every time you turn around, I had a prayer rug and said more prayers. We made it through. And it's mm. funny because now looking back at it, as hard as it was, and I can't even tell you how many times I cried every day, just hoping we make it through. My children now look back at that was one of the best times of their lives because for them, they didn't see the trial. They saw that we were just a tight knit group. So a lot allow what was I considered my lowest to turn out to be for my children, the time that bound us the closest. Mm. And I learned the lesson in that, that sometimes brother, we don't understand that Allah is using what appears to us as a bad situation to create something strong. And I'll just say this real quick. My son is very quiet. He's not a talker. So one day we're riding in the car. He's not talking. We just driving. And he's looking out the window and he said, you know how I know you a real Muslim? And I said, how? He said, when we were in Florida and there were no Muslims around, you wore your scarf every day. I thought to myself, man, you a real Muslim. Brother, I never even thought about it. But for him to have that stance showed him something. I wasn't even, that wasn't even a lesson I was trying to demonstrate. So it lets you know, you don't know when you're doing your walk and doing your way of devotion, how much someone else is looking on the outside, including our children, and learning from our lessons. So that was my, I, really, brother, that was the hardest trial for me in my life so far. Yeah. Oh, praise is due to Allah. Beautiful. And may praise Allah continue to bless Allah. you and your family for all of the sacrifices that you all have been through and continue Thank to go through and thank you everyone who was watching and bear witness people saying uh love this and my uncle uh minister jamil says love sister uh Fatima, uh -huh. and love people's podcast thank you this is allison says teach on living um the margins a while walk by people showing you love okay great my next question for you ma'am is your greatest joy in life being an mgt brother nothing surpasses being an MGT. And I've, I've accomplished many things. I've done many things. I've pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha, which I love. My sorors, that's out there. But nothing surpasses being an MGT. You know, when I joined the nation, I had no desire for children or to be married. I thought I'd be one of them single women in a sports car, got my little designer bag, and life would be good in my one or two bedroom apartment. Um, look how things turn. Now I have four children. I'm married with my husband and, but it's my love of my training that made me appreciate motherhood. I saw it in a whole nother light, learning how to rear your children in my seven training rooms. Going to my class made me really want a husband to balance me off and to be able to share and care for a black man building a world for us. Being in this class made me appreciate my value so much that being modest is, is my pride. It's my, it's my badge of honor to put my headpiece on, you know? So my seven training units made me appreciate more of who I am mm. than I could have ever got anywhere else. But it's amazing we were in class yesterday and I was so excited, but it just, 
And then I thought to myself, I owe $52,000 for going to college for four years. And I never got what I get for free every Saturday going to the miles for four hours. You know, that wisdom, they couldn't even touch it. And I owe them over $50,000 for something that I get to go to Saturday class surrounded by women who believe just like me who's striving just like me. And yet I get to do that every Saturday for free. Brother, that's the greatest joy knowing that I get to say I'm an MGT in my sisterhood. Yeah. That's oh, it. Praise. So uh, beautiful. Yes, ma'am. And thank you everyone who is showing love all across the country. And that's right. Teach. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we have a quick 60 second commercial break. Okay. for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. We want to thank you, everyone who continues to like, share, and subscribe and every anonymous uh, cash app. We greatly appreciate it as well. Thank you all. One moment. Okay, camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those services. Sister Miriam's ABC I Love Me children's book and coloring book and now Spanish book. All three available on Amazon.com. Sister Naima's Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Kenneth's bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation. Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 Disinfected Cleaning Services out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in a Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra, as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. If you would like to donate or Thank you everyone who is watching and continues to watch and show love on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube as well. My next question, ma'am, is uh, what advice would you give to future mothers? Wow. Um, if you could get your hand on the series called How to Give Birth to a God, I would start it there. I, I would, I would, I couldn't imagine going through my pregnancy. So it was, I have twins. So I've been pregnant three times. I can't imagine each of those times not having my how to give birth to a God series. Mm -hmm. um, it was one that showed me the way to keep my area and environment in a proper way, mentally, as well as physically. It guided me and made me think about every thought every item I ate, everyone who came in my company and how to put into the, my children who I still see today, that, that spirit of Allah. Now, I'm not saying these are the most obedient children in the world. However, <laughs> they, they reflect a spirit in them that I know came from what was instilled in them from the womb. Um, also, and like I said, in that series, which I know you can get at store.finalcall.com, but in that series, there's one of the greatest points is watch who you are around, watch what you listen to, watch who you interact with, watch what you eat, keeping in mind the, how priceless what this time means. Motherhood was one of my greatest joys um, and watching them go from the womb and now manifest now into adulthood has been an honor for me to be a part of that journey for them. Mm. So while you are on this journey and a part of it, make sure your prayers, your mindset, your spirit, your energy, and what you eat. Cause we have a tendency to say I'm eating for two. So that means we get to eat whatever we want to eat. And I've had many haagen days using that excuse. Yes, ma yes, ma <laughs> so just being very, very mindful. You know, the minister says that we're scientists. 
you know, along with being the first nurse, the first teacher, the first guy, but we're scientists. So every step of what we have to do as women, now that's whether you are registered in the nation of Islam or not, we have to be such scientists and use that scientific ideas, even in our carrying what's in our rooms, you know, and going about that. Cause it's nothing more but a, a pure reflection of who and what you are. So sometimes you gotta stop things that you were doing before your pregnancy that you can't do in your pregnancy. Mm. Same thing with once the babies come. Who came around me before? I may not need to enjoy their company no more <laughs> now that I have children. So it's being very mindful of every step of everything we do. Excellent. All praise due to a lot. Wonderful. And Sister Fatima, the uh, what type of music do you like to listen to, ma'am? Oh, brother. I rock all genres. I am okay. huge with my reggae. Uh, I love classical. I love jazz. Uh, I love a little country. <laughs> R&B, old school rap. I'm an old school rap girl. So I'm the Rock Kim, Dougie Fresh, Kumo D days. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, well, yes, well. All right, excellent. And what we wanted to ask about, you have a, uh, a podcast that highlights MGT and yeah. the importance uh, of the seven units and things of that nature. Can you let us know uh, yes. where can we support your uh, podcast and how did it come about? Um, my sister, my oldest sister, uh, well, let me back it up. Several years ago, I had started at a job. And while I was at work, one of the young ladies said, I didn't know Muslim women could laugh. Mm. And it like blew my mind she said that. So when I went, I got off work, I called my oldest sister and she's a Christian. And I said, guess what the lady at work said? And I shared it. And she said, well, keep in mind, everybody don't know Muslim women like that. They only know what they see on TV. So it dawned on me, wow, you know? And so she said, you need to make a talk show talking to other Muslim women so the world can see Muslim women. Well, at the time, like I talked to you about, Brother Joshua, I'm in the struggle to be a single mom. I had the time to do a talk show wasn't on the floor. So years have passed and now I'm at that stage in life where the children are older and I'm looking like, it's time, it's time now. So I started a talk show last year. We started in December called At My Sister's House. It airs every Thursday right here on YouTube and on Facebook. And then every Monday is In the Spotlight Presents. So At My Sister's House talk show highlights different MGT where we show the refinement, the beauty, the civilization of who we are. We talk mm -hmm. about relevant topics that's going on, everything from independent education, women in the ministry, to um, we just had Sister Audrey on talking about an update on the crisis in Flint with the water situation. But the, the point of the show, the minister mentioned to us, and then I'll go back to the rest of it, but the minister mentioned that they're trying to write the Honorable Elijah Muhammad out of history. We're duty bound to let the world see what did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad produce in North America, in this class that we say Elijah's class. The MGT are phenomenal. I mean, brother, we have conversations that would blow uh, minds of scholars. And I'm thinking to myself, I get to talk to these sisters one-on-one -on -one, and they'll say some of the most profound things but nobody else heard them but me. And mm. how do I get mm. to tell the world? So I thought, wow, what an opportunity for the world to see how profound, how beautiful the sisters are reflecting everything that we've been taught. So at my sister's house, that's the foundation aimed at MGT around the world and talking to them on various topics for the rest of the world to see that's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad makes. Those are the women under Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the Spotlight presents it every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and I highlight an MGT business. There are businesses 
all over, sisters doing phenomenal things from as you had with your sponsors, writing books to dance schools, to sisters with cook baking companies and cooking. One sister has a luxury line of bags, but we can't even support each other because we don't even know. And the rest of the world doesn't know. So in the spotlight, present highlight an MGT and her business every Monday. And it's for me an opportunity. The minister said this, the world is in the condition that it's in today because of the disrespect of women. And we as sisters have a duty to make sure the world see us. You will hear a lot of times, brother, and every sister listening can bear me witness. I see the brothers, but I don't see the women. I know I see the FOI, but where the women at? A lot of times they don't realize we're right there in their community with them and we're doing great things. So I pray by Allah's permission that at my sister's house would be the um, uh, engine, if you will, to sort to the world, show the world what the MGT are doing around the world and invite them to be a part of this phenomenal class. Excellent. All praise is due to a lot. And, and people, let's make sure we support people are saying, go ahead and bear witness. Yes, ma'am. And uh, we have one last question for you. Sister yes, Fatima. Sir. What would you like your legacy to be, ma'am? I lived the life of a Muslim. You know, I told my children a long time ago that when I pass on, on my headstone, they don't even have to put my name. They can just say, here lies a mother, a wife, and in big letters, a M-G-T. I live this, brother. I love this. I will sacrifice for this. And I pray every day of my life is an example of this. I pray that I get to show someone that's searching for how to live a good life, how to have a relationship with God, how to be with the people of our community and be an example. I pray that I'm some example of what living the life of a Muslim and striving because Allah knows my heart, knows it, the imperfections, the flaws are there. Um, but the striving, I pray to Allah and I'm an example of just trying to be the best that I can be. All praises due to Allah, excellent, excellent. What a legacy that is. And thank you all for everyone who has shown love all across the country. This, I wanna thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule, Sister Fatima. This is Thank Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off with the People's Podcast. Thank you all for watching. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam, sir.